In this video, I'd like to work an example of indifference curve analysis uh, because in the last video, all I did was show you what the consumer's optimization problem resulted in. In this video, let's go ahead and work a problem out of the text. Here, I'll go ahead and present you with the text. Here's the text if you buy it. Uh, it looks just like this. If you turn to page 59, there's a question at the top. Shanna only to, consumes two goods, tanning lotion and press-on nails. And here's the information transcribed from that problem. We want to know how to draw the budget constraint. Well, in the last video, you remember that we, uh, we went ahead and analyzed how you would draw a budget constraint. You draw the budget constraint by first asking how many press-on nails could Shanna buy if she spent all of her money on press-on nails? Well, 2 into 30, that gives you 15, that's a point on your budget constraint. You can do the same thing with tanning lotion. How many bottles of tanning lotion could, could Shanna buy per week if she spent all of her money on tanning lotion? It's 4 into 30, we get 7.5, but remember that we have time period of a week here, so you can actually buy 7.5 bottles of tanning lotion per week, even though bottles are indivisible. Um, just buy 15 every two weeks. So decimals don't really bother us too much in, in this setting. Shanna actually buys three pack, or nine packets of press-on nails and three bottles of tanning lotion. Now we could go ahead and check to see if she spends all of her money, but trust me, I've done the math. It works out. Remember, last in the last video, we had an indifference curve that was just tangent to the budget constraint at that optimum. What we're doing is we're taking the information from Shanna's problem. We look at her behavior, and that tells us what she's doing there. We spend a lot of time figuring out what the slope of this indifference curve looks like. I'm um, just going to go ahead and point that out, that at any point on this indifference curve, we know that the slope is the marginal utility of press-on nails over the marginal utility of tanning lotion. Marginal utility of X over marginal utility of Y. We know that anywhere along this indifference curve, that's the case. We also know from the previous lecture when we constructed that budget constraint that the slope of this budget constraint, the negative slope of it, is the price of X over the price of Y. Now, notice one thing about the slopes of the budget constraint and the indifference curve at the point of tangency. They're equal. That's how you know that it's a point of tangency. And the one thing you can do is at this point here, at the optimum, we can go ahead and say that the price, the ratio of the prices equals the ratio of the marginal utilities. That's how we'll be able to find where that uh, indifference curve is. Another thing to point out here is that uh, we can go ahead and figure out what this price ratio is. So we have data from the market, and we can see that the price of press-on units or press-on uh, press-on nails is two dollars per packet. Price of tanning lotion is four dollars per packet. So we can actually say that our marginal rate of substitution is two over four, or one half at, at that at that point. So that, that might actually be useful for later, so just keep that in mind. So now let's go ahead and change the prices and ask the second question. Her old bundle had nine units of press-on nails. Those now cost one dollar. It had three units of uh, of tanning lotion, three bottles of tanning lotion. Those now cost more. It cost seven dollars. Nine plus twenty-one. That's thirty. Exactly her income. 
And so we know that that's exactly on our budget constraint. We know that, that this is a point on the budget constraint. What's another point on the budget constraint? Well, notice it's pretty easy to figure out where the x-axis is here. And so let's go ahead and, and I already have it labeled here. We can say if Shanna spent all of her money on, on uh, um, press on nails, she would buy 30, uh, 30 units of, of that good. Is the marginal rate of substitution equal to the new price ratio at this point? It turns out we changed the prices to 1 and 7. Price ratio changed. Even though the budget constraint actually goes through there, it can't be the optimum because the price ratio is no longer equal to the marginal rate of substitution. The indifference curve is still the same. And that's not going to change. We have this, this assumption that preferences are going to stay constant throughout the problem. We're not going to allow preferences to change, so we can use uh, our information about prices and incomes and how people's incentives change to describe what act, how people actually behave in the problem. This is actually drawn fairly well to scale. Our new budget constraint goes like that. There's an area of bundles now that are affordable above Shanna's old indifference curve. There are bundles that give her more utility available to her at the new prices. And so she'll go and pick one of those. In this particular question, we're not, uh, we're not asked uh, to actually illustrate which one she's going to pick, but we know that it's going to have less tanning lotion and more press on nails. It's going to be along this part of the budget constraint. And she's going to have higher utility at the new bundle than at the old bundle. One way to see that intuitively is that she could choose to have her old bundle. She could afford it, but she chose something else. That something else must have been better. So this, this example kind of illustrates a few things that you should know about indifference curve analysis. First of all, at the tangency, marginal rate of substitution, equals the ratio of the prices. We get data on the ratio of prices, and we learn about where the marginal rate of substitution is. Secondly, that's useful, especially when we have a situation like this, where we have another, a new budget line that goes through that old budget line. It'll actually happen more times than you think. If you don't believe me, read, uh, read my book. You'll see plenty of real-world type examples where this actually comes up, and it's useful to know. And Third, it shows kind of how you can use these indifference curves of budget constraints to make predictions and describe types of behavior that you would see in the world. And it really shows a lot of the usefulness of indifference curve analysis.